<laughs> so I guess I'll start out then. So I think it's, I, I'm doing a feature on science education. And so I'm interested, and I think it's fair to say you guys are the equivalent of Bill Nye or Mr. Wizard these days in terms of science education entertainment. Do you think that your show is having an educational impact? If so, how? Um, we're getting a lot of feedback that it has a large educational impact. We speak every year for the last several years at the California International Science Teachers Association meetings. Uh, and the teachers there tell us that Thursday mornings after our show airs is some of the most fertile discussion they have in their classrooms with the students. Um, we've even uh, been told by uh, Dr. David Wallace over at MIT that he thinks over the past half a decade, engineering schools have moved from, uh, you know, people could do their whole PhDs all simulated in a computer in mechanical engineering. And over the past half decade, there's been a backlash back to forcing uh, PhD students out into the field to do work with their hands. And, uh, David holds that uh, that's in no small part because of the, of the midbusters. You know, the hands-on engineering that we're demonstrating by hook or by crook, I mean, neither of us has an engineering background or education. Uh, that uh, it's, it's having an effect out there, and it's really, it's totally not by design. Although we've both got honorary engineering degrees at this point. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we get feedback from all sorts of, uh, uh, all sorts of uh, uh, parents, uh, siblings writing in, uh, saying that their, their, uh, uh, their, their kids or, or whatever uh, are, have changed because of this uh, developed an interest in science, gone from no interest in school whatsoever to, you know, head of the class and this kind of stuff. I think there's there's a certain sort of playfulness uh, about what we do that makes uh, learning fun. And, uh, you know, we kind of uh, mix half and half, half content, half, uh, uh, you know, play with what we're doing and it works. Well, there's a, there's a critical difference between the between Mythbusters and Bill Nye and, Doc, and Mr. Wizard. Um, and that is that those, those two shows were demonstration shows. They would explain a concept, explain concept in detail, and demonstrate how that concept works using some type of physical model. Um, we are totally not a demonstration show because we don't know how it works. We're an experimentation show. So when you're watching us figure out how something works on camera, you're really watching us figure out how something works on camera. And I think that's actually one of the things that resonates with people. It was not by design. We did not set out to be educational in any way. The, the narrative of the show is truly a narrative of our curiosity and no one writes down our minds or the progression of experiments for us. We are the drivers of the content. And I think that has a resonance with the kids. I think that they can smell they can smell uh, smell people talking down to them from a mile away. And that's absolutely one thing we're not doing. Yeah, so um, since you guys obviously real science takes a lot of time and you have to pare down um, your show to fit into a half hour slot, so how realistic ultimately Well, it depends on how you define realistic. Uh, if you define it by the results, not realistic at all. Uh, but if you define it by a, a way of thinking that the logic methodically through the solving of a problem, then the people who are our biggest defenders are working scientists at Los, Al Los Alamos, at uh, Sandia, at Lawrence Livermore, at NASA, who say these guys they're not doing enough iterations, and the science isn't that rigorous, but they're demonstrating what a creative process science actually is, and they're demonstrating how difficult it can be just to figure out what question you're asking, let alone how to answer it. One of the key differences with what we do is that uh, uh, we fail, and, and in fact, we actually, oddly enough, like, like it when we fail, because we personally learn in that process. If, if we just go through and demonstrate something and everything works the way you plan, it, you know, we didn't get anything out of it. We're just you know, going through the motions. When we go through and, and fail, uh, we start to ask questions and that's when we learn. And, so, and I don't know uh, any other TV shows that will do that. We'll come back an episode or two later and say, sorry, that whole episode about such and such? Uh, Turns we, out we were wrong. Yeah, we were wrong. Uh, check this out. You know, science is, it, people tend to, I think one of the things that drives kids away from fields like science and math and engineering is the idea that they are these violent mountains of facts that one must simply learn. And what we're demonstrating is that they're actually really, they're messy. 
they're creative, there's all sorts of stuff in there that people haven't answered, that is still to be answered. We've done a bunch of things in the course of doing this show that no one's ever done before. Not that anyone needs to know how to polish a turd or make a balloon out of rolled lead. Um, but the fact is, is that there are still things that you can do that no one's ever tried. You can solve problems that no one's ever solved, and we're showing that on a weekly basis. Yeah, I, I don't think that, we don't go into this thinking of it as a, we're doing a science show, not by any stretch of the imagination. What we do is simply try to approach anything that we're tackling methodically and, and carefully. And it just happens that the most efficient way to do that is line, lines up quite nicely with science. And so if it's science, that's fine. Uh, it also points out, I think, to kids that science isn't just something for guys in lab coats. It's, you can apply it to anything in your life. It's just being careful and methodical about you know, breaking things down to understand them. Can you talk about what you were like as kids yourself? Were you uh, proponents of the scientific method or more interested in blowing stuff up? Um, I definitely was interested in blowing stuff up. Jamie's looked like this since he was 12. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I was definitely a Lego kid. I built whole cities, economies <laughs> out of Lego in my room up until I discovered girls at 16. Uh, I definitely like blowing stuff up. I don't know that I was, I definitely, the, my, my favorite teachers were science and art teachers in, in school. That was, those were definitely the, the teachers that were most influential on me. And it, I, I'm not sure it was as much the subject matter as the people teaching, but it did inculcate in me a, a, a real love of being able to figure stuff out and understanding how it works. In my case, uh, I was pretty creative at figuring out ways of avoiding the chores on the farm I grew up in in Indiana. But uh, beyond that, there wasn't anything exceptional. The, the one thing that Adam and I have in common uh, is that uh, from an early age, we both were just voracious readers, and we still are. Um, and uh, you know, it, it, and in fact, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't think we've either of us really grown up or matured quite yet. If that, it's just been one, you know, continuous stretch of reading. Uh, it's, most of, that's had the most profound effect on our, both of our characters. I think everything you need to know is right there. You How do you avoid chores? How do you avoid chores? Well, I discovered that if, uh, uh, that it, like in mowing the lawn, for example, we had a large uh, yard, and uh, I, I discovered that if I backed the lawnmower up and ran it into a tree repeatedly, sooner or later something was going to break, and it took a while for my dad to fix it. Um, so uh, that was, you know, that was that was pretty good. I, I, I figured all sorts of ways it took him longer, even pulling the, the spark plug wire back in the, in the socket a little way so that it wouldn't actually start, but there was nothing visibly wrong. Uh, so, you know, I, I could go on, but, uh, uh, yeah. I have a question. Uh, and touching on something you said before, a lot of science and nature shows are showing something awesome about nature and there's a narration and, or a demo. Uh, I, the only show that I remember when I was a kid that was sort of a, along the lines of what you're doing is what uh, Don't Ask Me with Magnus Spike, David Bell, and David Stalbert. Uh, and I think of it as kind of an intellectual precursor halfway there to Mythbusters. Have you watched it? Do you know it? No, I don't know this show. It's, it's, it's a 72, 73 BBC show with Magnus Pike screaming, and they had the audience in the in the uh, auditorium, right. in, the, in the studio, asking questions, and then they would say, "Well, let's see how we can answer that." Now, obviously, that was prepackaged. They they picked the questions carefully, right. so it's something that they can demonstrate and do the experiment in the studio. Uh, you would have more time to prepare. To, yeah. uh, you I, know, I, what you know, I do. The earliest science show I remember being fascinated by was David Attenborough um, and I mean a large portion of it was his enthusiasm his his passion for what he's talking about and the fact that he's there while the turtles are blown out of the water and he's talking about it I mean I remember that necessarily as a kid and I think about that when when I'm on camera you know I'm the uh, I want to be honest about the enthusiasm that, that I'm feeling I want to be able to communicate that and I often think about um, I often think about my wife. My wife is a tough audience. Mm -hmm. And when I come home at the end of the day, she doesn't want to hear about all the crap I've done that day. But if I've done something particularly exciting, she's totally excited by it. And 
so I think about her when I'm talking to the camera. That's who I'm actually having a conversation.